This video is about a sacred Eritrean baptism ceremony. Join me as I explore its deep-rooted traditions and spiritual significance. This is my turn. Good morning guys, let's go to Eritrea! It is very early in the morning and I find myself in an Eritrean Orthodox church. Well, I'm here to witness a baptism ceremony. As the ceremony unfolds, the blessed water is carefully prepared in the baptismal font. The priest, along with three other men, probably beacons, each holding an infant, stands in front of the pool. The priest, leading the ceremony, offers prayers as the family watch with anticipation. The infants, unaware of the significance of the moment, are about to undergo one of the most important rites of their lives, baptism, a ritual that binds them to their faith and community. Next, a few drops of the holy oil is poured on top of the water. The combination of water and oil signifies both purification through the water and consecration through the oil. A thread, often referred to as matab, is dipped in the blessed water during the baptism. The matab is a sacred cord made from blue or black silk or cotton. The thread is worn around the neck as a symbol of the person's baptism and lifelong commitment to the Christian faith. After everything is prepared, the baptism begins. The baby is immersed in the water three times during the baptism. This triple immersion represents the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The priest proceeds to the next important part of the ceremony, anointing the child with holy oil. This oil is applied to the baby's forehead, chest, limbs, and back. Following the anointing is the matab, which is tied around the baby's neck. The matab is worn for life, becoming an enduring reminder of the child's baptism and their spiritual journey. This is matab. So that is matab. Um, is it possible for someone, if you are not baptized as a kid, you can. as an adult? Yeah, you how? Can. You can. Like yeah. naked or they just pour because water? Why, 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 water? Or just pour just, water? Just, just, yeah, spraying okay. the water uh -huh. and uh, put it with uh, blessing oil. Yeah. yeah. Okay. After that, after that, you come inside the church, you think, what do you think? Okay. Yes, you must do at the boy 40 days. 40 days. After, born. after being born. Yes. And then for girls? The girls, 80 days. 80 days. Yeah. And uh, out, of, out of the Christian people, huh? it is coming any times, any uh, ages, any stage. Any stage. Yes. In come. the Eritrean Orthodox tradition, baby boys are baptized on the 40th day after being born, while female infants are baptized on the 80th day after being born. All boys or only baby boy, only baby girl, or can they be baptized together? Uh, do you know the, do you know the To my surprise, there was also a wedding taking place. Two deeply important ceremonies, both happening on the same day. What amazed me was the same priest who baptized the children also officiated the wedding. The Eritrean wedding felt very familiar to me. It was strikingly similar to the Ethiopian wedding I had witnessed a few weeks back. That is, it is uh, Amis. Amis? Yeah. yeah. So it's worn uh, during ceremonies, like yes, wearing? Yes, at the times of the ceremonies, to uh -huh. wearing, mm -hmm. like baptism and the wedding uh -huh. of the church, okay. to wear the white dress. Right. It is made by the Ethiopian. It is not fabricated by uh, not industry. And you said it's made with pure hands? hands. 
and it's pure cotton. Yes, pure cotton. The chemise is a beautiful and iconic traditional dress often worn by women in Ethiopia and Eritrea. It is typically made from hand-woven cotton. The fabric is traditionally woven on a loom, often by skilled artisans and can take several days or even weeks to create. It is traditionally worn during important occasions such as weddings, baptism and religious holidays, especially within the Ethiopian and Eritrean Orthodox communities. when we say we are going to Eritrea, we mean Eritrea around Nairobi. That was no. Lexi Wangu in Anetela. And the church is over so we can now remove uh, the Anetela or rather the attire. Ah, uh, yeah. fascinating to see how these neighboring cultures share such deep-rooted traditions. Following the church ceremony, the couple invited us to their home to continue the celebration. It was such a warm gesture and the hospitality was amazing. Of course we dined on some traditional foods like injera, the famous sourdough flatbread made from teff, and a delicious traditional bread. The meal was a perfect reflection of the Eritrean culture, rich, communal, and full of flavor. The priest also visited all three homes where children had been baptized, joining each family in their meals and blessings, strengthening the community spirit even further. One moment that truly stood out to me was when the female child, baptized 80 days after being born, was placed on top of a piece of injera, the soft round flat bread. In Eritrean culture, placing the child on injera symbolizes that she will never lack in her life, as injera is a staple food and represents sustenance and abundance. I wish for the child to always have enough and be surrounded by prosperity. As the day came to a close, I couldn't help but reflect on how incredibly fortunate I am to witness and experience such rich traditions, from the baptism to the wedding and the warmth of the families who welcomed us into their homes. Every time I have the chance to explore a new culture, I am reminded of how diverse and meaningful our world is. I am always grateful for these opportunities to learn, share and to connect with others through their customs, food and rituals. These experiences not only open my eyes, but also enrich my understanding of the many ways people celebrate life. It's a journey I cherish, and I'm excited to continue exploring and sharing more of these beautiful moments with all of you.